Here's Kirk Cousins from yesterday talking about why he signed his one-year extension that puts him under contract with the Minnesota Vikings through the 2023 season. I think the short answer is I want to be a Minnesota Viking. Um, uh, you know, I, I wanted to help create some cap space uh, so that we could put together the roster that you do feel really good about. And, um, and I think it, it was just trying to always, you know, find win-wins. And I think it was a way to create a win-win. A and, um, uh, and then hopefully that leads to a lot of wins this fall. My mindset was really to be a Viking. Um, I would like to retire as a Viking. And so I would like to play my way into that, if you will. I know I got to earn the right to do that, but uh, if, if I could draw it up, it would be play well enough that they're never, you never have to play or wear another jersey anywhere else. So. That's um, your quarterback forever, Mike, forever. That's your well, guy. But he's not acting like I know. he wants to retire a Viking because he's doing these little short-term deals, three years, three years, two years. And, well, who is And it? that's his prerogative. Yeah. Well, well, uh, Patrick Mahomes isn't. I know, but Patrick who, Mahomes. No, I'm saying who is it, though? Do you think it's him more or the oh, team that, uh, oh. that also wants that? I thought he said that. who isn't. Yeah, I thought he yeah. said who right, isn't. Right. I, I think it's him. You I think, think it's him. I, okay. think the, I think the team always would like to add – the three years on the back end or four years on the back end where the team controls the player's rights one year at a time. These contracts are good for the player. If you are confident that you're going to stay healthy and you're going to continue to be desirable to other teams, it's always better to do a short-term deal. It's always better. I mean, the best contract for any player would be one year. Yeah. Every year, back to free agency. Every year, back to free agency. I know I'm good. I know the teams are going to want me. Back to free agency. One year after another. Um, now that doesn't do much by way of creating a, you know, a, 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 a practically sound cap strategy for a team, but uh, not two and three year deals don't either. So the the Vikings have been over a barrel with Kirk Cousins. They were there earlier this year. I'm surprised Cousins did the deal. Cousins had them. He had them, and he told me last year. He was doing the media tour for Sleep Number or whatever pre-Super Bowl. He wasn't inclined to extend his contract with the Vikings. Now, that was when Mike Zimmer was the head coach. See, I think that the hiring of Kevin O'Connell made Kirk Cousins far more likely to cooperate with the Vikings. And if they had hired Jim Harbaugh, I don't think he would have cooperated with the Vikings. I don't think he would have signed the extension. Hiring O'Connell was a big step in my mind in getting him to extend his contract for a year to give them some cap relief. And now everyone can make a decision after 2022 whether or not he's the guy for the next five years or they're going to come up with some other solution. You're right, right. I, 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 I feel, and and again, Mike, I, you know, I don't know. I'm not saying I'm right or wrong, or you're right. I don't. It feels like neither party wants to be married to each other too far down the road. That they both want to kind of like take it, like let's take it one or two years at a time and see where it goes. You know, Kirk Cousins is that quarterback where, you know, he he he's good. He's a good quarterback. You don't just throw him overboard for. Oh, we just need a new quarterback. As we've discussed, he's top 10-ish in the NFL, 11, 12, whatever, somewhere in there. And when we get into those kind of guys, you know, that's how you always explain it. And I think you do a good job of that is he's a guy that, yeah, he's not going to make plays happen. The play breaks down. He's not going to like, oh, I'll save the day and run around and make a few people miss and then throw a 40-yard laser. No, he's he needs a system and some things in place. But when he does have that, he can tear your butt apart as far as the defense is concerned. You know, he is smart. He's got a pretty good arm. You know, he understands how to play in the pocket. So there's a lot of good there. You don't just let that go down the river. But he's also one of those guys that a certain faction of the fan base is always going to go, oh, well, I wish we could get one of those guys that could, you know, make amazing plays or just a little sexier or more fun to watch. And I don't know, Mike. That's just kind of the feeling I get out of there, that both are kind of taking it day by day right now, evaluating the situation. Well, Cousins is a guy who can play very well for you if everything else is going exactly. well. Right. The defense has to be good. The offensive line has to be good. He's got great receivers. He's got a great running back. But we've seen it time and again when the walls close in on Kirk Cousins, he cannot improvise. He can't make a second play happen on his own if the first play isn't there. That's the problem. Yeah. So the team has to be good enough to allow him to have the first play. That's why I thought a trade to the Colts would have made a ton of sense when we were kicking around ideas and potential destinations. The problem is 
And I know plenty of Vikings fans wanted to get rid of Kirk Cousins, but if you trade Kirk Cousins, who who's your quarterback going yeah, to be? Right. Does Matt Ryan then fall out of the sky as the Vikings quarterback? And would Vikings fans want that? I don't know what Vikings fans want other than a Super Bowl win. They just don't know how to get there. And there's no viable alternative to Kirk Cousins right now. So you try to get what you can out of Cousins, prop him up, block for him, have the defense play better than it was last that's year. Right. And last year, it was not good. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's why there's a new coach. That's why there's a new GM. That's why they're moving forward with a new approach. And the challenge is, can they get enough around him while he's still good enough to deliver? But, you know, Chris, I don't know how long he plans to play. He's got that that tower in front of his house with all the rocks in it that – that total all the months in his life up to the age of 90 or something. He takes a rock out every month as a reminder. He's getting close. It's kind of morbid, but it's kind of like what we say on PFTPM every Friday. We're another Friday closer to death. Every month, he's another rock closer to death. But I don't know how many rocks are going to be left in that, that thing when he retires. But when you consider the arm, the mobility... I mean, he's kind of Tom Bradying it now. Yeah, I mean, he can play for ten more years if he wants to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he can. I mean, he's the kind of guy. You know, again, like you explained, if you put the right support around him, you know, it's it's how I explain guys like Brady and Kirk Cousins at times. Now I know Tom Brady's better than Kirk Cousins, but my point is the fact that you know they can uh, Kirk Cousins. He could take it, you know, take advantage of more. Like he can make more out of more, if that makes sense. But he can't make more out of less. And, and I'm going to explain myself. You know, to to the point where you always say, make more out of less. Yes, if there's a few offensive linemen hurt and the system's not delivering that day, he's not going to make it happen. He's not going to be like, oh, Josh Allen, Mahomes, don't worry, guys. I'll throw sidearm and run around and make people miss, even though we're not playing our best, and we're still going to win because I'll make it happen. No. But, it, and this is why I think you do kind of see it out with Kirk Cousins. You got a guy now with Kevin O'Connell who we know has been with some guys that got a system. And, you know, that's where Kirk Cousins has great value. That's why the Shanahan's and the McVeigh's of the world like him because he could take advantage of, of all that a system has to offer. And if it's a great system with a great coach who's smart and creative, he could take advantage of every little thing that that coach can set up for him. And that's where I think Kevin O'Connell and that whole group there is hoping that this works out the right way. And that's why those kind of offensive minds like Kirk Cousins, for sure. You know, that that's, again, that's Brady too. Brady on a greater level, but... He could take advantage of all those Josh McDaniels, Bill Belichick, 90 million plays and rules and things, and boom, and I'll work it like a machine. But I do think if you put Brady in Kansas City, it ain't going to look like Tom Brady. It's not. It's the, You just drop back, and we got guys going this way and that way and make it happen, Tom? No, he wouldn't be Tom Brady, and we wouldn't know him like that. So that's where it is a little different that way, to your point with Kirk Cousins, and I think they're going to kind of see how this marriage works between him and O'Connell. Well, and the ultimate difference between Cousins and Brady is in the big moments, in the big spots, who steps up and who steps off. We've seen Cousins very rarely step up in the big moment. Yeah, Brady's amazing on the line, in the big game moments. on the line. Brady, right. Brady finds that he he thrives on that. He does finding that ability right. to make the big play in the big spot, almost to the point where it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy. That <laughs> the guys on the field are right. like, "Oh, oh God, here, here it goes!" Comes. Right here right. it comes. Yeah. Rams up big, twenty seven three. Here it comes. Here he comes. Yeah. Here he's going to make it happen. And uh, and yep. it, when you have the history of doing it, you become more confident that you're going to do it. The other team becomes more confident that it's going to happen and there it goes yeah. and i think the flip side is true for kirk cousins he got he's got to bust that narrative yeah no doubt that, that's why when they beat the saints with the overtime touchdown to kyle rudolph right 2019 season that was when it felt like he was starting to change the narrative and then they flew into a window in san francisco and and lost their they had an opportunity to win that game against the 49ers and, yeah. and i think that's that's where it went the other way and we've seen the vikings kind of fall apart since then. they got as close as they were going to get they hit their limit, and then the last two years have been abysmal. They they have a lot of work to do to turn it around, and Kevin O'Connell has yeah. his work cut out for him in Minnesota. All right. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.